Hello everyone, it's End Times Talk, and I wanted to come at you with a video pertaining to things that you can do uh, when you don't have space to grow a garden. Uh, you know, you can take, you can order seeds online, you can germinate them in your home, and then you can put them in cups and you can backpack them into certain areas. Uh, maybe you have a river near you, maybe you have an open lot near you, maybe you have woods near you, but but ultimately uh, there, there's always something that you can do to take care of yourself and, and, and to get food planted. And that way you know where it's at. You see what I'm saying? You're the only person that would know where that's at. Uh, be careful packing down a trail and taking the same route uh, every single time because you will wear down the plants and it, they'll start to kind of die off where the foot traffic is <clears throat> and it'll be a noticeable area and, and people might be able to find your, your food crop that way. Um, you know, you can plant herbs like thyme and, and, and oregano and, and uh, parsley. Uh, you know, there's many things that you can buy to, to f help flavor food, uh, you know, and, and uh, th that's very easy to, to plant in different places. But like I said, you want to germinate it in your home first and then take it out. For those of us who are blessed to have a yard, you know, obviously you can just grow a garden the, the way you want to grow it. But there's some people that aren't as privileged. Uh, to be able to have a garden and, and space to, to grow a garden in. And so I wanted to be able to give people ideas that, you know, you can go out and go for a walk. Go down, go walk down that railroad track and, and, and make your own little marker that only you know where it's at. And have a secret area where, where you can grow a small garden. They have these foldable shovels, these military foldable shovels that you can buy. And you can just get down on your knees and start to till the ground and loosen up the ground, you know, pull the grass clumps out, shake off the dirt off of them, and, and just kind of make an area where, where you know, you can uh, uh, grow food. You know, there's lots of different ideas. You know, we have all the, all of this open area around us that's that's uh, wilderness, and, and even in a city, you know, there's always an area where you can grow this stuff. Uh, you know, and, and like I said, take pictures of where you uh, grow at, uh, with your cell phone so that way you can remember where you planted things and then and then that helps you when you go back later on you know sometimes you will have to take a couple two liters of water in a backpack and and take it in and and go water your crop and all that stuff because you want to make sure that that you're taking care of those things uh you might need to buy a little bit of fertilizer and sprinkle it on the top of the soil or when you till the the soil where uh wherever you want to plant your i'm just going to call it a gorilla food garden uh, you know, wherever you have your gorilla food garden, you can, uh, wherever you start it, you can put fertilizer in the soil and till that in, or you can compost, you know, compost your own material, take all the scraps, you know, don't be wasteful, you know, even, uh, uh, manure and stuff, you know, any kind of manure you can use basically, but you just, with certain stuff, you have to wash off your veggies really well and, and make sure that there's no parasites or worms or anything like that, you know. But uh, ultimately, they're, they're, all it takes is some effort, and you can have a garden. You can have as much garden as you want. You can do this in multiple areas. You can have, you know, a garden off to this path, a garden off of this path, you know, and you can make them small, make it six foot by six foot and plant some stuff there and, and maybe start a garden a day, you know, make a hobby out of it, make it, get some exercise. Some people have a hard time, you know, uh, uh, getting out and getting exercise and, and going for a small walk. You not only are getting that good oxygen in your lungs, but, you know, you're also getting out and you're planting food that's going to be healthier for you than what they have at the store. You know, uh, I, I say this because, you know, times are getting tough, people. Um, you know, for, I just heard a report that in 2022, over 60 million chickens were killed because of a, a like an avian flu uh, that, that, uh, uh, you know, they've been, they've been euthanizing these, these birds, you know, and it's not just chickens, it's turkeys and, and all sorts of stuff. And, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the population numbers of, of food are down quite exponentially. And, but what, one but one thing we can do is garden, you know, collect seeds, have a, have a seed bank, your own personal seed bank, you know, and, and, and get some potting soil, get a bag of potting soil and, and get little trays and, Sometimes when you plant seeds, you have to have a germination dome over top of it. You can use a two liter bottle. Uh, you can use a 20 ounce bottle, uh, you know, but uh, sometimes you can afford like an actual tray that has different cells, you know, different slots to put things in. And then you can have a germination dome over top of that, you know, and set it in your windowsill and let the sun do its work. And 
you know, that time for planning things is, is, is getting close to being here, you know, especially for things that take a bit longer, especially peppers. I know just yesterday I planted my ghost peppers and, and got them under light so that way uh, uh, they can start to germinate uh, because uh, any of your hot pepper varieties, you know, your your uh, Trinidad scorpions or your Carolina reapers or your ghost peppers or any of those hotter types of peppers, you know, you want those to mature and turn color. And so you have to get them ready uh, uh, a lot sooner. And, and I live in, in zone 5A and, and we, we stay cold for quite some time here, uh, even though we're due to warm up here soon. Uh, they're saying that we're supposed to get some abnormal warmth in my area. And, and, and I'm hoping that it, it melts the snow off and makes the top soil uh, at least diggable so I can start to till my ground. You know, I already I already made plots last year in the fall, uh, and, and I got to get out there and, and till those uh, and get the manure worked into the ground but uh, and get the compost worked in the ground that I have been uh, uh, piling up. But, you know, there, there's all sorts of things we can do to prepare and get ready now. You know, you can go out for walks each day and start scouting out areas where you want to grow food. It's not illegal to grow food, people. It's not like growing the devil's lettuce, okay? It, you can literally take this stuff, put it in a backpack, you know, uh, uh, take this, take even extra seeds with you and, and plant seeds out there that you know will grow. Uh, so, something I encourage people to do is, is like when you buy a sack of onions, keep a couple extra onions and don't be afraid to put those bulbs in the ground. When you get a potato and you start to get the little sprouts off the potato, you don't need to put the whole potato in the ground. You cut it in, into sections and you want to have like a square with that eye just on the top of it. And you plant that in the ground. You know, uh, make sure that you cure, cure your squares. If you cut it and you leave it in the sun, the sides where you cut it will turn into like a potato skin eventually. And then you take that and you go put that in the ground. You could have a whole plot of potatoes out there in the, in the in the woods or on the river trail or uh you know in the the vacant lot next to you these things you know not a lot of people know what veggies look like when they're growing because there's not a lot of educated people out there that want to uh, uh be productive and and grow good food for their, themselves and their families but if you just put a little know-how in and you put a, and you and you're careful you know, you, you can have an amazing garden that's not even on your property, all right? Make sure it's public access, you know, uh, but, but uh, you know, there's a, lot, there's a lot of things that you can do uh, to get gardening now. And even if you only live in an apartment, you can have a garden, but you, you got to put the work in. You got to go scout out some areas and go in, get a nice backpack, uh, maybe put a cardboard box and, and, and line that cardboard box with some plastic. And you can use that as a tray to set your plants in. Uh, that you know how you'll backpack those in you can start plants in cups or or different different cells and you can take those out there you can start strawberries in the window i mean there's so many things you can do blueberries and 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 all sorts of different things so i wanted to give you guys some ideas on how you can have a garden even if you don't have property to garden on all right but there, like i said there's a lot of us out there who do have property to garden on but, but now is the time to start thinking what you're going to plant and obtaining your seeds because I will tell you that when spring comes, there is going to be a heavy-duty rush on seeds. They're going to be hard to come by this year. Fertilizer is going to be hard to come by. Tools are going to be hard to come by. Uh, in, last year, uh, uh, you know, there was a few things I needed uh, in the springtime, and, and it just was very hard to obtain uh, because of everybody knowing that, that, that it's time to start gardening it as your life depends on it, because it really does. Our lives depend on us gardening now. And, and, and some of us, uh, uh, you know, have a spouse who, who makes uh, uh, the, the most of the money. And, and some people are, 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 are uh, take care of the home and take care of the kids. And, and you could even have the kids wear backpacks, take the kids out with you and, and help have them help you start a garden. You know, it could be a family ordeal where you can go out and, and enjoy the time you know, and, and make these little plots of, of gorilla uh, food gardens, you know, uh, and, and, you know, keep it a secret, you know, maybe even draw a map uh, so the kids know where to go uh, to find food if, if some, you know, if ever need be. Or, uh, you know, just to remind yourself on, on how many places that you planted stuff, uh, you know, keep them, keep them small and, and, but have many of them, you know, 
Uh, I know that my favorite out of all plants is the Egyptian walking onion because it's such a producer. It is a massive producer, but it is a little expensive to get going. You know, I I, uh, I got on eBay right before I made this video and I looked at some of the prices and, and it ranges between 15 and 20 bucks, you know, for, for 10 to 20 of them. You know, it, it's a little expensive to get going, but I would I would uh, suggest getting mature bulbs. All right, that that th th those ones will produce onions on the tops the first year you plant them. But if you get the small bulbettes, all right, the ones that are smaller, about this big, and and you want you want ones that are like that big, you know what I'm saying? That are like a, a bit a golf ball or bigger. Uh, uh, get those ones because those ones will, will produce onions. But if you get the smaller ones uh, that are tinier. Uh, they might not produce onions their first year, and you might have to wait until the second year. But uh, get as many as you can get, and and I plan on taking mine out into the woods. I'm gonna, I have quite a quite a few of Egyptian walking onions uh, in in my garden. I actually have three different plots of them already, and uh, when those grow their tops, I'm gonna cut those tops, and I'm gonna about take probably half of those tops and go and plant them in the woods in different areas in my area, so that way I own, I'm the only one that knows where they're at. And so, you know, I have this idea to expand out my gardening space. Uh, and, and also, you know what? If you forget about it and someone else stumbles upon it, you know, you just bless somebody. You just kept them alive. You see what I'm saying? So there's lots of things that we can do to get ready for what's coming. And I wanted to encourage you to get gardening this year. It is it is absolutely crucial to garden this year. I mean, it, it literally our lives are, are depending on it. You know, the the food is getting so expensive it's almost like it doesn't even there doesn't even need to be a shortage because you can't afford what's on the shelf anyways. And so, you know, I really want to encourage people to be gardening uh, uh, in, in, you know, if you know someone who gardens, obtain seeds through them. You know, they're heirloom seeds. They've already been grown in your area. Uh, seeds kind of adapt to specific areas over time, each generation, each seed that you harvest, you know, and learn how to harvest your seeds. You know, learn all the ins and outs. Get a gardening book if you feel you need to. But there's plenty of videos on YouTube on how to garden. And uh, I encourage you to, to find the species of plants that you want uh, and, and, and go out and, and get real active and get proactive and, and uh, grow, grow as much uh, garden as you can grow. Uh, and I, like I said, like I said, one of the best, uh, one of the best, uh, uh, crops that you can grow is those Egyptian walking onions. I just call them survival onions because they, they, they produce, they reproduce so much. All right. And, and it, and it really multiplies just in, in, in a year or two. And I mean, you can eat the tops if you want, and, and you can still gather that stuff, uh, or you can just harvest them all together. But I suggest letting them grow. And, and, you know, we, we still might have another year before things get really bad. And so this gives you that time to get those established. So I appreciate you watching End Times Talk. And today's was, was all about gardening and, and how to garden in areas where you might not have space to garden. Uh, we'll be doing some other videos on gardening as well. But I just wanted to talk to you about this uh, and, 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 you know, get this idea out there. May God bless you and may God keep you.